Hey folks, um, this is a an introduction to picking on the mandolin. Not picking, no, we're not picking on the mandolin, <laughs> playing the mandolin and um, uh, talking about basically right hand, right? So um, kind of got this, this philosophy that I've been thinking about over the years. And you know, most of these plucked instruments, doesn't matter how many fancy things you know with your left hand, if our right hand is weak or sloppy, you know, all this fancy stuff here is going to sound weak and sloppy. So one of the best things we can do is work on the fundamentals of picking. And, and even, we we're going to talk about how we hold the pick and what our, what our right hand feels like. So everything, everything um, that we do, um, it's really good if we can feel relaxed. And, um, and so the, you see how, I don't know how you can tell, my, my hand is really, it's a, it's a loosely curled, hand position and um, you know I'm not squeezing at all there's no like I'm not if you can see your fingernails go white because you're holding the pick so hard you might be doing it a bit too hard um, so nice and loose and relaxed and see how much thumb is protruding now if I was to everyone does this a little bit differently okay so there's no right or wrong with this there's things that work better or, or, or not so well for, for people but um, Basically, this is how I do it, and and, um, and I see a lot of um, um, the classical players will do this too. Um, the, the pick is not, like if it was super glued to my finger, it's not pointing out that way, right? If it was super glued to my finger, it's more like that. Maybe, maybe not quite so much as going straight up, but it's sort of a little bit like that, and it's covering most of this. I think this term here, for each segment of our finger is phalanges, phalange. So it's sort of the pick is contacting quite a fair bit of her on this side of of that finger tip or the phalange, and and I'm maximising surface area here with just one thumb and finger, and well, I'm not going to use two thumbs there, and um. And that means you can hold the pick quite lightly. Whereas if you're holding the pick, you know, with not much surface area, you've got to hold that really tight. And that creates tension. And that means your music will not flow as well as if you're relaxed. So you're maximizing surface area back here. Yeah. And um, I'm gonna just gonna put it where I normally put it. And um, the great, Next level mandolin player Chris Tealy um, has he's on the record as saying if you know you holding your pick loosely and sometimes you drop it you're doing it right <laughs> because you're not squeezing too hard right so we don't actually want to drop it but you'll be amazed with how little pressure you can hold that if you've got you know a nice um, amount of surface area contact and so the rest of the fingers are just lightly curled and and I'm going to bring this into the mandolin. Um, so this is basically the shape I'm after. It's almost like a bow hold, like a violin bow hold. Or the violinists are going to go, that's not a violin bow hold, but you get the idea, right? It's just sort of, there's a little bit of space here. And, um, and my, my wrist is arched. You will see some people do this, right? Um, you know, planting the, the palm of their hand on the bridge or just behind the bridge. And I'm not going to say that those guys, the professionals, I and mean, like say guys generically, I mean guys and girls generally. But um, you see people playing back here. Um, like I said, there's no right or wrong here, right? Except some are righter than others. <laughs> That's terrible. No, but if you, here's the concept. If you've got a bit of space here and your contact point is your forearm and the pick, and you can have your pinky just lightly resting on, on the, the, the top of the instrument or if you've got a pick guard, if you've got like a, a bluegrass type mandolin, they've got, sometimes they've got a pick guard there, you can just lightly rest your pinky here. And this is all backed up in, in the, um, the old classical tutors. Um, and, and Bigford um, is a great um, technique book for mandolin. He talks about um, having the pinky just lightly resting on the top here. So we've got we've got a nice relaxed pick hold. We're bringing a hand in here, and I'm just going to see if I can show you. Here, look at that. So I'm not contacting here. I've got this 
a little bit of space. And my pinky's not going to be planted like this. I don't know why I ended up like that. It's actually going to be just like just bent and it's, it can just trail. So particularly when we get to doing tremolo, which is a few steps down the road, but we'll get there. Um, this can just be just loosely floating on or just, just, just sort of touching the top as a reference point. So, so I'm not going to do um, a whole picking series of picking drills on this. This is just, this video is just getting the, the, the hand shape and getting set up to play. What we will do is we'll do some rest strokes. Um, I'm going to come a bit closer. Now, the thing is, we're going to be doing all sorts of picking and the tremolo picking gets quite fast and we're going to be doing alternate picking down, up, down, up, jig picking down, up, down, down, up, down. But for now, um, we're just going to focus on a downstroke, getting a really solid downstroke and and it's not just going down it's also a rest stroke so what i mean by that is if i'm playing the g remember this g d a e g d a e um so if i'm playing the g i end up the pick ends up on the d the, the, the d and and you just call them even though there's two g's and there's two d's you just call it the g and the d string so i'm going to end up there i'm resting on that string I'm going to play a rest stroke on the D string. I'm already there, right? And I can just progress through, and then the A string will stop the string, and then so on to E. And then if I play an E string, there's nothing obviously to stop me, but the, the direction of travel of the pick is the same. Now, there's there's a couple of things that I'm going to show you with, with what's what's going on there. It's not just you know grab your pick, hit the string, bash through it, land on the next string, bash through it. There's some things that we can do. I'm just getting close. I'm just saying, you see me. There's some things we can do to make um, our sound really, you know, lovely, a lovely sound, but also um, a strong sound. Um, even, and when I say strong, I don't mean loud. I mean just a full sound with 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 not much pressure and um, and with least resistance through the string. So here's here's what we don't do. I'm going to get this way now. I don't bring the pick or, or, you know, offer the pick to the string at 90 degrees and, and my pick a long way into the string. This is if I was trying to get the most resistance to a note, you know, and make it as hard as possible to play a note, I would do this. I'd go 90 degrees and I'd put a lot of pick into the string. I'd go in that way, you know, so I'm halfway at the pick and like, you can't you can't get it without you know really using a lot of strength and it's just it's not going to work. So what we do is we do that. See that that's the the tip of the pick is is higher than the base of the pick. So here is the most resistance that I can offer the the string. If I angle it down, a downward angle. pick is going to just, it's like a ramp, it just sort of glides over, right? I think a ramp is probably a good way to think about it. A downward pick slant, right? So that's one way of making the pick flow across the strings. Now what I'm still doing here, I don't know if you can tell, what I'm still doing is I'm giving the pick the entire the, the entire face of the pick. I'm giving the string the entire face of the pick. So it's 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 touching the whole thing. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to this direction. I'm going to forward slant. So, so as well as down, I'm angling the pick that way. So I'm just going to move my thumb back a bit. So so here is my downward slant. But I'm also angling, so the pick is only touching the string with the front edge. So this is not now, this is not how I would normally hold the pick right. I'm only just grabbing it. But you can see. So I'm going to go back to holding it. So here's the string. Let's see how this works. Here's the string. Oh, here's 
It's a string. Here's my pick. No, this is not working. I'll draw. I'll do a drawing later for you. But anyway, so you get the idea. I hope that it's not just 90 degrees to the pick. It's 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 a downward orientation, and it's a forward slant. So we've sort of moved the pick on two axes. And you know, this sounds really nerdy and 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 you know, hyper um, analytical, but just those two little things are going to be the difference in um, playing smoothly with a nice sound. So, rest strokes. Okay, so I'm going to do a separate video on, on um, some right hand drills, but that's the basic. Um, I'm just going to play a little bit more so you can see it. That's the basic setup. <laughs> Hear that? I accidentally went. It happens all the time. It doesn't happen all the time. It happens to us all when we're um, warming up or, or starting out. Hopefully, I can get both strings to sound as, as one. <laughs> and if you just spend the first week or two, um, just doing down strokes. Even, even now, I'll still do a warm up where I'm just doing open strings and down strokes. That's our fundamental sound. And then everything else we can build off there. I know it's tempting to want to, you know, charge ahead, but, um, you can't beat, um, working on your, your pick technique and even warming up once you're established. Um, just like violinists and cellists. Um, um, they when they uh, when they're learning, they focus on just open strings and just building up that that lovely smooth um, bow motion. It's just, this is our bow, you know. It's much cheaper than a violin or a cello bow. We're lucky, but we still have to work on getting this. This is our sound right here. This is like our secret. This is our tone. It's our volume. It's everything. Um, okay, so enough talking about that. Um, do some downstrokes, um, and I recommend you do it every day. Just just um, start off your day with with some open strings and just checking that you're doing rest strokes. We're not always going to do rest strokes, right? But this is our foundation. Okay, I'll talk all day. Stop it, Dean. Okay, hope this helped, and um, leave me a message or, or get in touch if if you want something. Um, explain a bit more in depth or, or more clearly. All right. Thank you. Bye.